Good morning, church. Welcome to our service. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We are so delighted to have you, and uh, we're so excited to fellowship with you. So, join us as we worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
entitled how to prepare for the year 2022 and beyond how to prepare for 2022 and beyond so if you missed last week installment i encourage you to go back look at it watch it uh, on facebook and on youtube so that you can connect the content to what we are talking about today uh, today i want to give you some homework to do during your holidays. This exercise that I want to give you today, this homework that I want to give you today will help you prepare better for 2022 and beyond. It will help you prepare for 2022 and your future better. I encourage you to write down the key questions that will form part of your homework. And above all, I strongly encourage you to take some time during the holiday and do this homework. I have done this homework during my preparation for this sermon and I must say that I learned a lot of things about myself. I discovered a number of things I did not know about myself and I am also embarking on a journey of uh, improving, embarking on a journey of changing the areas that I identified as my weaknesses. Amen and amen. So how to prepare for 2022 and beyond? How to prepare for 2022 and beyond? Number one, improve your self-knowledge. Improve your self-knowledge. You are the person you need to know more than you know anyone else. You are the person you need to know more than you know anybody else. Sometimes we make a mistake of uh, paying more attention to other people than we pay to ourselves to the point that we end up knowing more about other people and less about ourselves. So, so I encourage you to improve your self-knowledge. In the book of Galatians chapter 6 verse 4 to verse 5 we read, make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given. And then seek yourself into that. Do not be impressed with who you are. Do not compare yourself with others. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. So in this scripture, we are encouraged to do a careful exploration of who we are. The responsibility of knowing yourself better is non-transferable. It is your responsibility to know yourself better. If you are married, you cannot transfer that responsibility to your wife. If you are a child, you cannot transfer that responsibility to your parents. So 
Why is it important to improve your self-knowledge? Why is it important to improve your self-knowledge? It is important because it is impossible to be your best self until you know yourself thoroughly. It is impossible to be your best self until you know yourself thoroughly. When you do not know yourself thoroughly, you are just adding the number of years to your life, but not living a purposeful life, not living a meaningful life. When you know yourself thoroughly, you will experience true happiness in life. True happiness is found within your true self and not externally. When you know yourself thoroughly, you will experience the freedom to be your true self. In other words, knowing yourself better is greatly liberating. Knowing yourself better is greatly liberating. And so I encourage you to take some time during the holidays and spend some time with yourself to improve your self-knowledge. Do not avoid yourself. Do not avoid yourself. It is the greatest problem to travel to many different places in the world but never travel to self. It is a problem to explore many different places in the world and never explore self. It is not wise to explore everything else and never explore yourself. To be knowledgeable about many other things but not self is not wise at all. So spend some time with yourself and have a meeting with yourself. The resolutions made as an outcome of that meeting will help you prepare for your future better. The resolutions, the decisions you will make in that meeting will help you prepare for your future in a better way. You need to know yourself enough to understand the areas where you become your stumbling block to your success. You need to know yourself enough to understand the areas where you become your stumbling block to your success. You need to know yourself enough to know if you are not sabotaging yourself and delaying your own progress. You need to know yourself enough to know the areas where you need to change in order to achieve desired results. Know yourself enough to know how to encourage yourself when going through difficulties in life. Amen. So I have listed several helpful introspective questions that you can ask yourself as you try to enhance your self-knowledge. Number one, core beliefs. Core beliefs. Ask yourself, what are my core beliefs? What are my core beliefs? And as you do that, I encourage you to write down your answers. Beliefs are the convictions that you hold to be true. For an example, core beliefs are beliefs about God, yourself, other people, and the world. They are things you hold to be absolute truths. Your core beliefs determine how you perceive and interpret life and the world. And so audit your core beliefs and identify false and limiting beliefs. Audit your core beliefs and identify false and limiting beliefs. Number two, values. Ask yourself, what are my values? What are my values? There is a slight difference between values and beliefs in that values are principles, ideals, or standard of behavior, while beliefs are convictions that we generally accept to be true. In Philippians chapter 4, we find a great lesson about how personal values for a believer should look like. How personal values for a Christian should look like. Philippians 4, I'm reading from verse 8 to verse 9 in the English Standard Version. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is love, Whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is any worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace 
will be with you. Amen. And so using this template, ask yourself, what are my values? List your values and then check them against this template. Is this true? Is this just? Is it lovely? Is it of good report? Is there any virtue in it? Is it worthy of praise? If you identify any set of values that is not in line with this template, you need to pay attention to that and change that accordingly. Remember that your values are the framework of your decision-making process. Yes, your values are the framework of your decision-making process and they serve as guiding principles for your life. Your values are your moral compass. In other words, your values govern how you behave, how you speak, and how you interact with other people. Both beliefs and values determine your attitudes, your opinions, your decisions, your behavior, your habits, and ultimately your character. Yes, both beliefs and values determine your attitudes, your opinions, your decisions, your habits, your behavior, and ultimately your character. Ralph Emerson said, and I quote, So a thought and you'll reap an action. So an action and you reap a habit. So a habit and you reap a character. So a character and you reap a destiny. End quote. So a thought and you reap an action. So an action and you reap a habit. So a habit and you reap a character. So a character and you reap a destiny. End quote. Question number three is about personality. Ask yourself, what are the qualities that form my distinct character? What are the qualities that form my distinct character? Personality is the combination of characteristics or qualities that form an individual's distinctive character. It is the characteristic patterns of thoughts, feelings, and behavior that makes a person unique. It is the characteristic pattern of thoughts, feelings, and behavior that make a person unique. Number four, personal interests. Personal interests. Ask yourself, what are my interests? Or ask yourself what my interests are. Your interests are the activities that you enjoy doing and the subjects that you like to spend time learning about. And so ask yourself what my interests are. Number five, strengths. Ask yourself, what are my abilities, skills, and talents? What am I good at? What are my abilities, my skills, my talents? What am I good at? Strengths are our built-in capacities for particular way of thinking, feeling, and behavior. They are our built-in capacities for particular way of thinking, feeling, and behavior. Your strengths are those things you can consistently and reliably do well. Number six is about weaknesses. Ask yourself, what are my weaknesses? What are my weaknesses? You can ask yourself the following set of probing questions to identify your weaknesses easier. Ask yourself the following probing questions to identify your weaknesses easier because sometimes we struggle when it comes to identifying our weaknesses. You can ask yourself, where do I struggle most? Where do I struggle most? Where do I need to improve? What are the areas in my life where I need to improve? What mistakes do I tend to make? What mistakes do I tend to make? Where do I tend to let myself down consistently? What are the areas where I tend to let myself down consistently? By asking yourself these questions, you will find it easier to identify your weaknesses you will find it easier to identify areas where you need to improve in your life. Amen. Number seven is about your self-worth. 
it is about your self-worth. Ask yourself, what my sense of self-worth is? What my sense of self-worth is? The dictionary defines self-worth as the sense of one's own value or worth as a person. The sense of one's own value or worth as a person. And so, how to evaluate your self-worth? How to evaluate your self-worth? I want to start by talking about how not to evaluate your self-worth before I talk about how to evaluate your self-worth. How not to evaluate your self-worth. Number one, your appearance. You should not measure your self-worth by your appearance. Yes, you should not measure your self-worth by your appearance. The attention you get from other people as a result of your appearance is also not the right measure of your self-worth. Yes, the attention you attract by your appearance is not the right measure of your self-worth. Another one is net worth. Net worth is not the right measure of your self-worth. Yes, net worth is not the right measure of your self-worth. Net worth is the value of all your assets put together minus your liability. It is your assets minus your liability. Your possessions are also not the right measure of your self-worth. Your income, your investments, your material possessions such as money, cars, and houses, are not the right measure of your self-worth. There is a misconception that umuntu gumuntu ngezito. Even ngezito, sasuguti, umuntu gumuntu ngabantu. Umuntu gumuntu ngabantu. There is this common misconception now that umuntu gumuntu ngezito, which is fundamentally wrong. Amen. Another one is your connection, the people you know, the status of the people you know is also not the right measure of your self-worth. Yes, 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 your connections, the people you know are not the right measure of your self-worth. Another one is what you do for a living, meaning your career or your business is also not the right measure of your self-worth, your business, your career, what you do uh, for a living is not the right measure of your self-worth. You are a human being, not a human doing. You are a human being, not a human doing. Another one is your social media following. It does not matter how many people follow you on social media. It does not matter how many people like your posts on social media. It does not matter how many people comment on your social media. Your social media following is not the right measure of your self-worth. It is okay to know of other people's perspective of you. It is okay to be aware of other people's perspective or opinions of you. But you should also know that their opinions have no impact on your self-worth. Their opinions, their perspective on you have no impact on your self-worth. Eleanor Roosevelt said, and I quote, No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. End quote. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. And so, how to determine your self-worth then? How to determine your self-worth? What is the right method of determining your self-worth? What is the right method of evaluating your self-worth? David asked God a very profound question that I want us to look at as we search for the correct evaluation method of determining your self-worth. He asked God a profound question that I want us to look at this morning. Right from the beginning, we discover that God is the only one who has a valid formula of the evaluation of self-worth. He is the only one who has a legitimate formula of how to evaluate self-worth. This profound question is found 
in the book of Psalms 8, verse 4, New Living Translation. Psalm 8, verse 4, New Living Translation. What are mere mortals that you should think about them? Human beings that you should care for them. Same scripture in the easy to read version. And I wonder why are people so important to you? Why do you even think about them? Why do you care so much about humans? Why do you even notice them? And so according to God's evaluation method, number one, you are important to God. You are important to God. You are special to God. He is mindful of you, number two. He is mindful of you. He has good thoughts about you. Number three, he cares about you. Yes, 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 believe that. God cares about you. Number four, he recognizes you and he accepts you just as you are. He recognizes you and he accepts you just as you are. So, so when you understand this truth, when you grasp this, when you comprehend this truth, you will stop trying to, to prove your worth to people who do not have even the capacity to comprehend it. You will stop trying to impress, trying to, 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 to validate yourself, trying to prove your worth to people who do not have even the capacity to comprehend your worth. So David here asked God, what are human beings that you are so mindful of them? What are people that you are so mindful of them? And the answer to this question is all over the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. The answer to this powerful question is all over the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Number one, in Genesis we learn that God is the creator of humankind. God is the creator of humankind and because of that he is the only one who knows the worth of the people he created. He is the only one who knows the worth of the people he created. Number two, in Psalms 139 verse 13, for you formed my innermost parts, you knit me together in my mother's womb, for you formed my innermost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. And also in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, God says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Number three, in the book of Psalms, 139 verses 14, I will give thanks and praise to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. I will give thanks and praise to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works and my soul knows it very well and again here we see that according to god's evaluation method you are fearfully made you are wonderfully made in other words you are extremely expensive such that no one can afford you you are unaffordable number four in the book of acts chapter 17 verse 28 it says for in him we live and we move and have our being for in him we live and move and have our being another version puts it this way it is through him that we are able to live to do what we do and to be who we are it is through him that we are able to live to do what we do and to be who we are so through him and in him we live through him and in him we live through him and in him we find our being through him and in him we find our true identity through him and in him 
we discover our purpose. We discover the reason for our existence. Through him and in him, we find appropriate knowledge of who we truly are. Through him and in him, we find the appropriate knowledge of who we truly are. So in him, we find the appropriate knowledge of our true worth. In him, we find the appropriate, the correct knowledge of our true worth. Number five, according to God's evaluation, you are worth Jesus' life and all that Jesus is. You are worth Jesus' life and all that he is. You are worth dying for because nothing less than Jesus can afford your worth. You are worth dying for because nothing less than Jesus can afford you. And so in short, when it comes to understanding your true self-worth, you need to look at Jesus. You need to look at Jesus. The cross speaks louder than words. The cross speaks louder than words. It speaks louder than all the Bible verses put together. According to God's evaluation method, you are a fool, a complete and a wonderful human being that is deserving of love. Yes, believe that, believe that, believe that. You are a fool, a complete, a wonderful human being that is deserving of love. You are deserving of respect. Yes, you are deserving of respect. You are deserving of recognition and acceptance. You are deserving of recognition and acceptance. Amen. My conclusion is that no person can know themselves better outside of God and without God. No person can know themselves better outside of God and without God. No self-discovery method can truly show you who you are besides God. No man-made therapy can help you learn more about yourself outside of God. And so the only way of getting to know yourself better is to know God better first. The only way, the only way of getting to know yourself better, of getting to understand your true self, your true identity, is to know God better first. And then allow God to introduce you to you. Allow God to tell you who you really are. Discover yourself in the presence of God. Our God and our Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is liberating indeed. Your word does that only you can do in our lives. We thank you for your word, for you have used your word to correct misconceptions. You have used your word to tell us, to show us, to reveal to us who we really are. We thank you, Lord, that in you we live, move, and have our being. We thank you, Lord, that in you we find our true identity. We thank you and we give you all the glory. We thank you for your word that has power to change our lives in the name that is above all other names. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. May God walk before you and level all the mountains ahead of you. May God bless you in your coming in and your going out. May he bless the work of your hands. May he bless you in the city and in the country. May he cause his face to shine upon you in the name of Jesus. Amen, Bazalwani. I love you and have a good and productive week ahead. May God bless you indeed. Amen.